Hey guys, so today I'm working on two videos, both of which are going to end up in other channels. But one of them it has sections I think you guys would be interested. So I'm gonna share it with you here. I hope you guys like it and it's gonna give you a better idea of that complete video. So stay tuned for that. I will provide details for that when it finally goes uh, live, uh, probably in EV West's channel. All right, enjoy the video. All right, so you got your whole EV system installed and you're getting ready to turn it on for the first time. Uh, you can program the motor controller and take the safety precautions, put it in neutral, chalk the wheels, do all that when you turn it on for the first time. But before you even get to that, we can program the battery monitor. Uh, when you first plug it in, it does, the car doesn't need to be turned on. It When you throw your main switch, it's gonna tell you right away your voltage. Uh, and it's probably gonna come in around 20 volts if you're using a 120 volt system on a five to one prescaler. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in to the programming mode for the battery monitor and let it know that we're using a 5 to 1 prescaler and also the shunt information. In this case we're using a 600 amp shunt with a 50 millivolt value. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to enter programming mode by pressing and holding the menu button uh, for three seconds. Uh, press right twice to select function. And now we have our function numbers. We have uh, 1.0 up to like 6.5 or different functions. So right off the bat, we're going to go set our prescaler. And uh, it's a bit of a, a oversight on the part of the battery monitor that, you, that it's so high up in the numbers. It's 6.1 is our shunt amp rating and you have to do this first uh, so you can't really start at one in this case we just set it a little while ago to 600 the default is 500 and it goes in 50 amp increments so we'll leave it at 600 our shunt is a 50 millivolt shunt it's uh, the 6.2 function there uh, 6.3 is our backlight mode uh, we like auto for this and i believe if you go all the way left we get maybe it's all the way right we get auto and what that does is if it ever draws more than an amp or so the light will turn on and it's kind of a useful indicator when you plug your car in at night to see it charging you plug your uh, charging cord in a couple seconds later the light will come on on the dash indicating that it's seeing uh, incoming current so 6.3 then we go to 6.4 for alarm contact polarity now we use the alarm uh, if you use our schematic, we use it to shut down the charger if you exceed a high voltage. So in this case, uh, normal operation would be normally closed. Now the default's normally open, but we do switch it to normally closed so that that will allow your AVC2 to turn on and allow the J1772 to charge properly. Uh, so after 6.4, uh, we go to 6.5 and that is our prescaler and you have options of 1 to 10, 1 to 5, and 1 to 1. We're going to set that to 1 to 5. And that's pretty much it. There's some temperature stuff, uh, auxiliary input mode, uh, really just a lot of optional stuff that we don't use. So at this point, uh, when you exit programming by pressing and holding menu, you should now see an accurate amp rating and an accurate voltage. So in this case, we're at 124.8, and that's what we confirmed earlier, so we know we're good there. Now we're going to enter programming mode again and start at 1.0. So you press and hold it for three seconds, hit right twice, select function. 1.0 is our charger float voltage. Now what this is, is it's basically the voltage at which uh, your charger is going to go into cutback. And the purpose to tell the BMS this is so the BMS knows when we've reached maximum voltage and the batteries are fully charged. Uh, and you want to be just about a half volt below our float. So we just came off at uh, 125 volts is our float in this setup. We're using the Tesla battery. So we're going to go one half volt down for 124.5. And um, what happens is you set two conditions, the voltage and the current from the charger. And when those two conditions are met, the battery is full. In this case, if we hit 125 volts and we hit, uh, we'll set it for like eight amps, um, and the charger tapers back to eight amps. At that point, your battery is essentially 100% full. And what that does is every time you charge the car, the battery monitor synchronizes to your battery pack. So even if it drifts a little bit during each charge, it will go all the way to the top. It will give you an indicator that says it's full and then you can synchronize from there. It does it automatically, so that's great. So uh, let's see, 124.5. Our next setting is our charger float current. 
and I don't have a calculator on me right now, but this is a percentage of our capacity. So we need to know what our capacity is up front. In this case, we have um, 12 Tesla batteries and they're arranged into a 6P configuration at 50 amp hours uh, each battery. That gives us 300 amp hours. Uh, if we wanted to set our uh, current to about 7, 8 amps, that's gonna be about 2.3% of uh, 300 amp hours. So we'll set that for 2.3, use a calculator. Uh, just basically we use eight amps uh, because the charger typically shuts off at five amps. As it goes down, 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 it hits five amps and shuts off. So we want something a couple amps above that so it'll actually be in the state of below eight amps for a small period of time that will allow it to synchronize. So moving on from there, uh, the amount of time that this condition is met is feature 1.2. And I usually do this real short. We'll just set it for 60 seconds. So uh, if the car sits for one minute at 125 volts and eight amps, that's considered full. And that's our synchronization parameters right there. From here, we're gonna go to the discharge floor. And the discharge floor, it's set for lead acid at 50% in, um, Lithium, we always do 10. 10% is pretty much empty. Um, and then we're going to go to our battery temperature. Uh, we don't really uh, use this feature at all. Um, we go to our time averaging filter. We don't use this feature at all. It's going to tell you how long the battery lasts at your current um, driving style. It's just very inaccurate. We don't use it. Uh, and then the auto sync sensitivity, if you have a problem synchronizing at the top, you can adjust that from 0 to 10 to make it more sensitive. We leave that at the default setting. So going on now to our low battery settings, we have uh, the 2.0 low battery alarm say to charge. We set that for 10%. In other words, we don't want this thing to give us any warnings or anything at all above uh, 10%. It's just not worth it and we trust that everybody knows how to read a percentage gauge, especially with all the iPhones and everything now and our low battery alarm on. Now there's two different types of low batteries that often get confused. There's a state of charge, which would be counting the amp hours, counting the capacity and saying we're low on capacity. And the other one is we're low on voltage. And those are two distinctly different things and you gotta kinda keep them separate in your mind. So in this case, uh, we are talking about the state of charge. So we're saying we're gonna ignore the voltage, but anything below 10%, we're gonna give the user a warning. Now, 2.1 is gonna give us our battery alarm in volts. In this case, we really don't wanna go um, below uh, 50 per module. So we'll set it for 99 volts. That's a pretty good uh, indicator there. If you're below 99, you definitely need to find a charging station pretty quick with this battery set up. Uh, and then the low battery off, when you start charging it, at what point does the alarm turn off? Uh, we can do that almost immediately, so we'll put it 5% above, uh, which would be 15%. Uh, next we have our minimum alarm on time. We just set that at the default. I think the default here is it just, uh, there's no minimum. You actually cancel it with your uh, uh, finger here. And then the low battery alarm on delay. The default's 10 seconds. That's good enough. And what that does, let's say you do a full throttle and the battery sags to 95 volts. It would have to sit there for a full 10 seconds before it gave you a warning that you're depleting the battery. Because as you know, you can get 10, 20% of your overall voltage to sag during a hard acceleration. So that kind of prevents it from triggering it uh, prematurely. Uh, maximum alarm on time, we leave that as default. Uh, and in 2.6, enable low battery alarm. Now, when it says enable the alarm, this is the internal relay that we use to prevent an over voltage. So in the case of a low battery, we're gonna turn this off. So feature 2.6, this is really important actually, um, because if you deplete your battery, it will actually prevent the car from charging it. Uh, and so you gotta make sure that 2.6 is set to off. Uh, 3.0, your main uh, battery low voltage alarm on. So this is gonna be, again, where we consider our low voltage from our main battery, what's our, um, you know, uh, too low number. And we'll set this at 99 again. Anything below 100 is uh, probably time to get a charging station. So we'll set that for 99. And then we'll move on to uh, 3.1, which is the main battery uh, voltage alarm delay, uh, and that is set for 10 seconds default. We'll leave it there. 
The low voltage alarm uh, is enabled off by default. We'll leave that off on 3.2. On 3.3 is auxiliary battery. We do not use an auxiliary battery in this. So 3.3 through 3.5, we're just gonna skip. We jump ahead to 4.0, which is our high voltage alarm settings. Now this is what we're gonna set we, we know we're charging our pack to 126 and our charger uh, will always shut off at 126. It's just an extra level of protection. If we set this to 127 or 120, we'll do like 128 because that's still a really safe voltage for these batteries. If the charger ever hits 128 volts, the system will automatically shut down and the display will register high voltage event and it will stay up there until you reset it. So if you come to the car in the morning and you see it high, you know that your charger didn't shut off your link pro shut off and you'd want to uh, send your uh, charger in for repair double check that it's operating properly or programmed to the correct voltage uh, so after that we have 4.1 which is the high voltage alarm on delay and that is set for five seconds that's pretty fair if your charger exceeds that voltage for five seconds go ahead and turn it off uh, 4.2 is enabling the alarm. So the alarm won't work unless it's enabled. Default is off. We're going to set this to the one inside the brackets. And the reason the brackets are like that with the one inside is it denotes that there's an internal relay and that's the alarm. There is an option for external relays and if you press right you'll see the one outside of the brackets. That's not what we want. We want it inside. Moving on from 4.2 we go to our uh, auxiliary battery and 4.4 or 4.3, 4.4, and 4.5 are all auxiliary battery related. So we just get to skip those and go to 5.0. Now 5.0, this is important. We're going to do our capacity. Uh, we're using the Tesla batteries, which come in around 58 amp hours per cell. Uh, we set it for 50, and so that's about 15% reserve. Uh, and we like to drain the car all the way down so that our state of charge is 0%, and we still have over 100 volts in the pack, so we're safe there. So it's very important to set this usually 10 to 15% below your actual capacity. In this case, again, uh, you know, six times 58 is our actual, so that's about 348 amp hours or somewhere in that range. We're gonna set it for 300 amp hours. And uh, in our previous experience with the car this size, 300 amp hours, should get this car about 150 miles. Uh, 5.1 is our nominal discharge rate. We're not gonna change that, leave it at default. 5.2 is our nominal temperature. We're gonna leave that at default. 5.3 coefficient of temperature, leave it at default. 5.4 is the pukert effect. Uh, we only do lithium batteries and there is no pukert uh, on lithium. So we just go ahead and set that to one. So 5.4 should be set to one. It's 1 1.25 by default. So definitely be sure to uh, adjust that one. And we have 5.5, which is a self-discharge rate. We don't have that, we leave it off. Now your batteries will discharge because you're running uh, some instrumentation off of them. So it's totally normal to charge your car. You come out the next morning and maybe see it at 99.9 .9 or 99.8. It'll lose a couple tenths of a percent uh, every day that it's not charged. And that's just running the instrumentation. Uh, after that, we have the charge efficiency factor. Uh, we just set that for 100%. Um, and that is 5.6 and, um, and that's it. We already did 6.0. So at this point we just press and hold the button that exits programming mode after two seconds and we are now synchronized. Okay. So now that we've exited programming mode, what you want to do is you want to double check the functionality of your other systems, especially your charger. You want to watch your charger, charge the batteries, make sure they're balanced at the top and make sure it turns off at the proper voltage. At that point, your battery monitor should automatically synchronize and it should flash full. Uh, that's an indicator that's synchronized. If it didn't flash full when your charger turned off, uh, go back in and measure your battery voltage. Look at what the BMS is reading. Uh, there are times that the battery monitor has cable compensation. So at your pack, you might be reading 126 volts, but your battery monitor might say you're only at 124. So be mindful of your actual pack voltage and kind of calculate that cable compensation in your head. Typically in larger cars with larger cable runs, we'll see up to two volts of cable compensation in a smaller car, sometimes just a volt. So in other words, this is registering 125 right now, but we're actually, I think in this car, we're at about 125 and a half. Perfect voltage for it. 
Other than that, that's about it. Just double check that it works. And then, the, and then most importantly, once you synchronize at the top, the single most important thing is to take the car, drive the battery all the way down to 0%. Once you go below 15%, constantly be checking your voltage to make sure that you do not undervolt the car. If you keep your batteries within the low and the high volt range, you cannot hurt them. It's almost impossible to hurt those batteries uh, if they stay in that voltage range. So again, drain your battery as you're driving the car, keep checking your voltage and make sure that you can get your state of charge all the way down to 0% and you still have at least 100 plus volts or you're safe uh, for depending on your pack, your safe voltage. Make sure you're in that range at 0% and at that point you're calibrated and synchronized and you know that you're counting your amp hours and you're keeping your battery uh, uh, level safe and your voltage above the minimum and that should be it. Enjoy your uh, EV. If you have any questions, give us a call or an email, supportevwest.com. Thanks and I'm gonna go for a drive. As always, if you like what I do, please don't forget to support me on Patreon. It allows me to spend more time doing these videos and to better the quality of each and every single one of the uploads that I do. So if you're my patron, thank you very much. If you're my future patron, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.